So in this video, we want to look at an example of sketching the first derivative and second derivative of a function, given uh, the shape of the function. So we don't know the curve, okay, but we want to be able to sketch the gradient function for this, okay, and then its gradient function for a little bit of extra practice. So what you should probably do and get used to is drawing the graph directly underneath the one that you've got, okay, so that then you can start thinking about, well, uh, this curve's gradient function uh, is zero at these stationary points. Well, that one, that one, and that one. So if I do some dashed lines, I then know that that is where it is crossing the x-axis for the gradient function. Okay, so that's minus 2, and there's 4, and there's 0. Okay, so then with that in mind, you can then use that bit of information to really then think, well, what does the rest of the curve, what's that going to look like? So to the left of minus 2, we've got a piece of the curve here where it has positive gradient. Okay, and you can see that it is slowing down. So it is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, okay? So it starts off at quite a steep gradient and then gets shallower and shallower and shallower. So it's quite steep, quite positive gradient. So it's going to come in and get slower and slower and slower and get down to minus two, okay? That's where it's going to be crossing through the x-axis. I'll draw that again because that's not quite very good. Bit of a curve there. That's not very good either. Let's have another go. Right. The benefit of having a whiteboard. Okay. It's coming in, it's getting slow and slow and slow, and then it gets to zero at minus two. Then we go into negative, okay, because the gradient of the curve there is negative. And then it comes down and it slows down again and becomes zero. So between minus two and zero, it is negative, it's below the x-axis. We'll come back around like so. Now, past zero and up to four, we're going back to a positive gradient until we get to zero again. So there's going to be this part where um, it's increasing, okay, the gradient is increasing, and then there is this maximum gradient that it hits, okay, and then it starts to slow down again, come back down through to minus four, through four rather, and then goes into negative gradient, so it's going to sweep down like that. So this cubic, uh, sorry, this cortic-esque looking graph, when you're drawing the gradient function, becomes a cubic-esque uh, graph, okay? And that's no coincidence. Now, at these points, okay, here and here, where there was seemingly a maximum gradient that we had, these are actually quite important points in themselves. So these are uh, points of inflection. Okay, and you can see that these points marry up with where this curve is stationary. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, so that's if that's f of x, then this is f prime of x. Let's keep going. Let's do another one. So we're now doing on to the second derivative. Okay, so f double prime. Okay, gradient function of that. Right, well, the where this curve is stationary will be where this curve is crossing through its x-axis. So that point there, there. And that point there. Okay, now we didn't have that bit of information on the original curve, okay, as to what those actual points were, but that's telling us where that, uh, where the second derivative, this gradient function of the gradient function, is crossing through the x-axis. Now, what do we know? Well, um, as we're coming down to that point, we've got a negative gradient until we get to that point. So we're going to have a negative gradient, 
So we're down here with the negative region. Then we're going to hit zero. Okay, hit zero. And then we go into a positive gradient until we hit zero again. So as you can see, we're going to get to this point where there's this maximum uh, gradient. Okay, and then it starts to shallow off again. It's increasing, then it hits a maximum point, and then it's decreasing again. So it's increasing and then decreasing. Okay. And that's where it's going to hit zero, okay, because we've got a stationary point there. And then it goes into negative gradient, like so. So what you're seeing now is that point there where we had that maximum gradient is, should be marrying up with the stationary point that I've got here, okay? So what this is really saying is if I wanted to find these points of inflection on my original curve, what I can do is look for, you know, if we uh, follow those dash lines down, okay, all the way down to this second derivative, this is where the second derivative is zero. So we'll be using that um, very shortly, okay, so we can work out those points by looking at where this curve is zero. And we can find those stationary points when this curve is zero, okay? So it all kind of like tumbles down, okay? And that's how we can inter help interpret the graphs that we have, okay? I'm going to go through another couple of examples so you can see how we deal with asymptotes in the next couple of videos.